welcome back everyone. Now it has been a couple of weeks since I uploaded the video about the build of this boat here and if you're new here you might want to check that one out first. And since then I received a whole bunch of questions and comments and I would like to address some of them. And I also would like to show you the upgrades that I did to it. Now as nice as it is to have some shade under the silage top cover here, there's one major problem with that and it's visibility. Now if you sit at the back here and you try to steer the boat, you really just can look out the back or the front. You don't really know what's going on to the left and right of you. You almost rely on a second person in the front here to give you that kind of information. And that is obviously a problem, so I decided to install two windows, one on the left, one on the right back here. And I simply used a shower curtain liner for that and some duct tape. Um, because it's very clear, it's very cheap, you think you can get a sheet of shower curtain liner for under five bucks. And I can see already people going crazy in the comment section how this is not durable enough and how it will break down with the UV light. Listen, I know all of that and there are certainly better materials out there to build a cover. But keep in mind I'm trying to do this under a certain budget and five bucks is really not a lot for this. And if I get a couple of years out of this, I will be super happy. And if I have to come back after a couple of years and redo the whole cover, in just a matter of a couple hours that's really not a big deal so so far it's working great and i'm really happy with it another little upgrade i did are those wooden cleats that i made from recycled flooring i recently tried to tie up the boat to a dock and that didn't go well since the wind was pushing it around like crazy so having a second attachment point at the back for a rope is certainly going to help with that now let me show you the biggest upgrade so far i installed two 100 watt solar panels on the roof here to charge the batteries and let me tell you those things work great. I tried to keep this very simple and to connect the two panels I simply used two hinges. I also used some wooden strips they help to center the panel on the ridge and then I also added one strip of aluminum it just helps to keep the cables organized. To set up the boat, a second person is for sure very helpful and that goes especially for the solar panel since it has quite some weight to it, it would be hard to do by yourself. And in order to tie them down, I used some S-hooks that I bent in shape so I can hook them into the panel and then I used paracord which I then can wrap around a screw. And the stretchy cord at the end here takes care of the loose end and makes sure it doesn't loosen up. Now this has been tested for a couple of weeks now and we had some really strong winds and waves and they never came loose. As mentioned earlier, those panels do a fantastic job in charging the batteries. So with this setup, you basically can go on forever now since they even charge on a cloudy day to a certain percentage. So there's no more lugging around heavy batteries and you don't have to worry about the distance anymore that you can go. Now let's get into some of the questions and comments that I received. Now one person he mentioned it really could ruin a weekend if one of those pontoons get punctured and uh, therefore he suggested to build solid ones. Now that's a really good point but I have two things to say to that. Um, a solid pontoon just simply cannot compete with the space efficiency of a collapsible inflatable pontoon. Now how about the puncture resistance? Now I did two things to help with that. Uh, one, when I custom ordered them, I asked them to reinforce the bottom so there's an extra layer of protection especially when you land on shore, um, that way the rocks won't, and the rocks and sticks or whatever is in the water um, will have a harder time to puncture the skin. Second, I asked them to put in three chambers per tube, which means even if I get a puncture in one of those pontoons, there would be still two chambers that would keep them afloat and therefore they are still functional. So I'm not really worried about that part. So someone else commented on those arches here and he basically mentioned that they're kind of overbuilt and he had a couple of really good ideas how a person could make them lighter by combining the right kind of wood with some fiberglass. Yet again, that's a really good point and I 100% agree those arches are ridiculously overbuilt for what they have been meant so far, which is really just holding up this, this tarp. But back then when I designed them, I had already the solar panel upgrade in mind and in order to hold up those panels, you do need something beefy. Besides that, the weight is not really my concern. It doesn't matter if they weigh a couple pounds more or less. Um, but I sure do like that they are beefy enough and there's enough material that I can randomly screw in a hook or a screw without uh, compromising the structural strength of those arches. So someone asked me how long it takes to set up the boat. Very good question. 
now that I've done this about a dozen times, I would say it takes roughly 40 minutes for two people to completely set up the boat. And I will admit that's not very fast and somewhat of an annoying task, but you will be rewarded the second you're out on the water, especially in the evening hours when you're in a nice protected bay and you watch the sunset. If you make it long enough into the night, you might be able to see the northern lights up here in northern BC. And that's just priceless and well worth 40 minutes of setup time. Now, so far we spent five nights on three different lakes on this boat and we're really enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. I actually would like to show you a couple of pictures before I end this video. Sorry for the crappy audio. My microphone broke. Anyways, thank you for tuning in. I will catch you on the next one.